Here we're going to take a look at what we call common denominators. Now a common denominator uh, is a common multiple of the denominators, or the bottom of our fractions, in a group of fractions. It might be two fractions, it might be ten fractions. Um, we know when we have two fractions that are the same, that have the same denominator, we will say that they have a common denominator. This goes for three fractions as well. We don't always have to have just two. Um, so a common denominator is when we have two fractions that have the same denominator or the same bottom. And we're going to look at how we can find out what those are. So we're going to use a diagram to start with to figure out how we're going to find a common denominator. Um, we're going to find a common denominator for one quarter and two thirds. Now, start by drawing yourself a rectangle, and you should have a rectangle on your sheet already. We're going to break it into four sections, and the reason we're breaking it into four sections is because this fraction here has quarters, so I want to break it into one, two, three, four quarters in this direction. Now, I'm going to do the exact same thing, but we're going to do it with our third. So I need to break it into three sections also, and the way that I do this is by going horizontally to show that. So I'm going to just show one, two, three, and you don't need to show these numbers. These are just to help me illustrate it to you. Now, what I want you to take a look at is how many parts of this rectangle do I have now? And if I start to count them out, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So I can say the common denominator, our common denominator. is 12 in this case. That is for one quarter and two thirds. Now in questions, you're gonna see a little bit more than that. You're gonna be asked to write the equivalent fractions with 12, which we found in the last page as the denominator. And here's how we go about doing that. We're gonna start off with our one quarter and two thirds. So I'm gonna write out my fractions just like this. You can kind of organize your page however you'd like. Um, but I have my diagram with the 12 parts in a rectangle. Now to represent one quarter, I'm gonna shade in one quarter of them. And I know that we broke my quarters or my rectangle into quarters going this way. So I'm just gonna shade in one of these rows or columns, I guess they would be. So I can write here is that one quarter is the exact same thing as saying one, two, three out of 12. 3 out of 12 because in this diagram, which is the exact same as one quarter, I have three parts shaded out of the whole that is 12. Let's do the exact same thing for two thirds. Uh, two thirds, so when I broke it into two th into thirds, I broke it this way. So I'm gonna shade in two of these rows, just like so. And I'm gonna take a look at two thirds, how many of these um, boxes are actually shaded in. And if I count quickly, I'll see that I have eight shaded in out of the whole that is 12. So here I found that now I have two fractions that started out with different denominators, and now I've turned them into common denominators. And you'll see why that's important in a little while as we continue on. There's another way we can do this. We can use multiples. We always start out with diagrams and we look at how we can do this uh, without diagrams, and that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to take a look at finding the common denominator for three quarters and four fifths. These are the two numbers we're going to take a look at. And again, we're going to look at our denominators, and we're going to find the multiples of them. So I'm starting out with my multiples of this one, four. So my multiples of four, if you remember what multiples are, we go from four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, and I can keep going. So I'm just going to put dots here in case I need to come back and add to it. I'm also going to do my multiples of 5, and I got the 5 from the denominator of my second fraction that I'm trying to find a common denominator of. And to be able to find multiples of 5, I start at 5 and I start counting. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and I could continue going on and on and on, but I don't need to because what I'm looking for is a common multiple here. And hopefully you've noticed that right here, both of these numbers end up having 20. So I can write that my common denominator in this case is 20. And we're going to use that in our next slide. So make sure you have that down. 
And you're going to see questions that are going to have this second part here. This was not on our last slide, but it is right here. We're going to rewrite the equivalent fractions with 20 as the denominator. So I know that 20 is our common denominator, so I'm going to turn both 3 quarters and 4 fifths into being some sort of fraction that has a 20 as the denominator. So I'm going to start out with 3 quarters. And I need to think about, I want this to be out of 20. That's what I decided my common denominator is from up here. How, do, how would I get from 4 to 20? Now, we're thinking in multiplication here. I would multiply 4 by 5 to get me to 20. And as we know from when we did lowest terms, which is kind of backwards of what we're doing right now, we always, what we do to the bottom, we always have to do to the top and vice versa. So if I went times 5 on the bottom, I'm going to go times 5 on the top. And I should know that 3 times 5 gives me a nice 15 out of 20. And you'll notice this is not in lowest terms, and that is okay. That is exactly what we want for this case. So don't get that mixed up with what we talked about last unit. Now we need to do the exact same thing for 4 fifths. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So I know it's got to be out of 20 because that's what I found my common denominator as. How would I get from 5 to 20? What would I multiply by? I would multiply by 4 in this case. And so what I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So I'm going to times by 4 on the top as well. And I know that 4 times 4 gives me 16. So now I have two fractions that have the same common denominator. Now, why do we care about common denominators? What's the point of getting common denominators? Um, you'll see through this example here. We have John who has a cup of orange juice that is two-thirds full. Sally's cup is three-fifths full. Who has more orange juice in their cup? Now, unless you know fractions really inside out and out, it's going to be tough to tell who has more in their cup. Um, it might be easy if you could line them up side by side, but in this case, we can't do that. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to get these fractions out of the same thing so I can actually figure out who has more in their cup. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out what our common denominator is. I'm going to start by looking at the 3 here and figuring out what my multiples of 3 are. And I know I've got 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, and I can continue going on and on. I can also do this for 5, which is my second fraction that I need to worry about. And I'm going to go 5, 10, 15, and oh, I should recognize right here that I had a 15 for 3 and a 15 for 20. So my common denominator in this case is 15. Now, that doesn't tell me much. I just know what my fraction should be out of. They're not out of that yet, so I need to do that. I need to get them out of 15 so then I can compare the two. So let's take a look at my one that was over 3 here. So I have 2 thirds. I want this to be out of 15. What am I going to multiply by 3 to get me to 15? If I think back, that should give me 5. So I know 3 times 5 gives me 15. Perfect. So what I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So I'm going to multiply by 5 on the top. 2 times 5 gives me 10. Perfect. Let's do the second one here. We had 3 fifths was our other fraction. 3 out of 5. And I know I want to get this out of 15 just like the other fraction, so then we can compare. Now, how do I get from 5 to 15? Last time I multiplied by 5, but if I times by 5, that's not going to work. So I have to think of what 5 times what gives me 15. And in this case, it's 5 times 3. So I'm going to show this. Now what I do to the bottom, I need to do to the top. 3 times 3 gives me 9. Now, taking a look at this, which fraction is bigger? Is 10 fifteenths bigger or is 9 fifteenths bigger? Hopefully we recognize that 10 fifteenths is larger. And 10 15 start out as 2 thirds, which was John's cup. So I can write my conclusion sentence saying, um, John has more orange juice. Now we have a pretty good idea, good idea of how we can use common denominators. So let's try